All right, today we are reviewing the Samsung American style fridge freezer, the G series. A lot of these fridges are similar, but we are looking at the G series today. So let's get into it. First of all, it is absolutely massive. We have a family of five, we cook a lot, we keep a lot of food in storage, and it just fits. If Christmas is coming around, we can load that fridge up, it keeps the food fresh. Um, and compared to our old fridge, the, f the food stays fresh for so much longer. There's some stuff on the Samsung website about uh, you know, salad fresh. It, it's true. The, the, the salads, the vegetables, uh, and the food itself just stays fresh for a lot longer. That's to do with the air circulation, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, its ability to keep uh, temperature really well throughout the fridge, all the vents, there's individual vents on each of the um, on each of the shelves. Um, so yeah, the food stays really fresh for longer. You get obviously the ice and the, and the water on demand, which is so convenient. Um, it's stainless steel all around, so you can stick all your pictures on there with magnets. It looks really slick and modern. And um, yeah, it's as I said, it's big. So I'm gonna show you what the dimensions are so you can make sure that it's gonna fit in your fridge before you buy one. <clears throat> Key features, like I said, there's air outlet um, on each shelf. So each shelf has two little slots for air to be circulated, and that's how the food stays consistently fresh throughout the fridge. Uh, the glass shelves are safety glass, which means you can load those bad boys up and it's going to hold the weight. We've like, had, like I said, bottles of beer just stacked up and it n never had a problem with it. Um, it's got the ice and water. Uh, the drawers, the vegetable drawers are are big. You can get a lot in each of those vegetable drawers, so, so that's great. You can keep your potatoes and your onions and your carrots and your celery and peppers all in there and no problem. Nothing is getting squashed down this uh, nice and big. Now, the other great thing is um, the, the fridge is frost-free, so you don't need to on the in the freezer so the freezer compartment is frost free so you don't need to worry about cleaning it because it frosted up it just does not frost up we've had our fridge for eight years and we've never had to defrost it i know this is something that we used to have to do in the old style fridges but you know, it's worth mentioning never a problem um and it's easy to clean it's nice big it's easy to clean um and uh yeah never had any issues uh with uh with, with frosting over the set so, uh, so let's have a look at uh, yeah. How much does it cost to how much does it cost to run? This is an important one. So it's A1 energy rated. But what does that mean? Uh, well, it tells you on the website that it costs around 460 kilowatts uh, kilowatt hours annually to to run the fridge. Um, and so, what that translates to is about 66 pounds yearly, which is pretty good for a fridge that size. Obviously, that's going to depend on things like the temperature you keep the fridge at, uh, you know, if you leave the door open and it's having to work harder, how much food you're keeping in there, how much food you're moving in and out of the fridge. There's a lot of factors, but it's kind of an average kind of price and it's a good one to go with. I've used um, an average of 14.4 pence per kilowatt hour for this calculation. Um, but yeah, let's say it's around 66 pounds ballpark which is pretty, pretty decent. Okay, now you're gonna to need to get it into your kitchen. It comes out 75 centimeters, which means it's gonna come out further than, your, than an average worktop, which is normally about 60 centimeters. It's gonna come out a bit further than that. Um, so 178 centimeters tall, which is, yeah, it's not overly tall, uh, and it's 91 wide, which is a kitchen unit and a half kitchen unit is normally about 60. Um, this is a kitchen unit and a half. It's a little bit over 90 centimeters. Uh, so go to, so, so it's worth making sure that, uh, uh, that it fits. So obviously the, the consideration here is probably the 75 centimeter depth. It's also got to be a little bit out, you know, you don't want it right next to the wall either, uh, because you've got the, the water outlet pipe at the, at the back. Uh, and you've got to, you've got to, Obviously, that's the other consideration. Uh, the water pipe will have to be connected to your um, your water supply, 
it's quite a long pipe so you can route it around uh, but that's another consideration it comes with the fittings uh, so it's easy enough to do uh, but you are going to need somewhere to connect it so you might need to play around with that or have it installed that's what it looks like like i said it's a beautiful looking fridge it's nice polished stainless steel our surface is perfect i'm going to show you uh, the fridge um i'll walk around the fridge in shortly yeah, like I said, we've had over eight years, and the and the front is still polished and perfect. Um, this is what the inside looks like. Like I said, it's absolutely huge, and uh, we're going to have a closer look at uh, all of that uh, just now. Today we're reviewing the Samsung double fridge. Here you can see it from the front and both sides. It has a beautiful uh, stainless steel finish on the front and the side, so you can stick magnets on it. And it has a water and ice dispenser on the front, which we will look at shortly. The fridge comes with a 10 year warranty and that warranty is on the compressor. And so it's just the compressor that's warranted. To uh, activate the guarantee, um, you should, as soon as you get the fridge, fill out the form that comes with the fridge and register on the website. So you've, you've got at least the compressor covered for 10 years and that's the part that's most likely to go. Let's have a look inside the fridge. As you can see, it is absolutely humongous. There's so much space in there and on the side door as well. So you can see this is a two liter milk carton and it goes in that way. You can get all your condiments. You can get the egg tray there, butter tray there and loads of stuff in the side. Inside you've got four shelves, each have individual ventilation as you can see the holes in the back there, each of them so it's worth keeping that area clear. And then you have three vegetable style trays on the bottom. These are on plastic runners and we've had it for about eight years and they've been working fine. The only thing you might notice is that some of the trays on the plastic, you might notice some cracks. Well, that one there is cracked, I don't know if you can see it. it that doesn't bother me uh, really because it's just a plastic um, covering that's cracked. The glass itself is absolutely solid and we've loaded this fridge up and never had any issues with uh, the glass not being able to bear the weight. So it is really built really sturdily. I like to keep a, thermos, uh, a thermometer in the fridge just to make sure I've got the right temperature. This one is a salter and it's built for the fridge. As you can see, it goes down to minus 30 degrees. You will, you will notice that it's slightly over five degrees. That's because it's in the door. The door temperature is slightly higher than your fridge temperature. So you just got to be mindful of that, that the door temperature will be a couple of degrees higher uh, than the actual inside of the fridge. Now let's have a look at the freezer. Again, loads of nice deep shelves. You have four shelves there and two drawers uh, you also have the shelves on the side of the door which are pretty um, you can get a fair amount in there as well and then the inside of the door has the ice box as well the ice box does come out if you need to clean it we've not need to clean it that often but to, to open it you would grip it on both sides pull this handle back and then it pulls out. It does stick quite a bit because obviously you've got lots of water that's frozen in there um, but, uh, but it does come out if you need to clean it for whatever reason. Again each of these shelves have uh, vents uh, that uh, are worth keeping uh, clear. That one's a bit full. On top of the fridge it's quite a nice flat area so you can store things on there if you like. This is absolutely solid, so you can put boxes of things up there if you need to. It doesn't it doesn't heat up up here, so it's fine to put things up here. Like we've got candles, I think, in that box. The um, dispenser area has a 
removable tray so you can take it out and clean it okay let's look at some of the other functions um, on the panel here first one if you hit freezer it tells you the temperature that the freezer is set to it's minus 20 at the moment and you can change it by just pressing the freezer button again 21 22 whatever you want I normally keep it around minus 20 same for the fridge if you hit fridge it will tell you the temperature of the fridge and you can change the temperature of the fridge and I normally keep it at 3 this indicator um, tells you whether the filter in the fridge needs changing it lights up red when it needs changing so mine needs changing the other function you might be interested in is lighting that lights up the dispenser area so if you need to drink at night if you have uh, people visiting and they have small children and you don't want them playing with the functions you can press child lock and the child lock indicator comes on that means the buttons are locked except for the child lock button that could be a design flaw if you're going on holiday you can set it to vacation mode by holding the child lock button until this indicator comes on and that just makes the fridge a bit more efficient because it knows it's not going to be open and closed frequently so let's turn that off the other button that's interesting is the power freeze so if you've bought a lot of food that needs freezing and you've filled up the freezer you turn on power freeze for a bit and that just accelerates the rate at which uh, the food is frozen once you've changed the filter you have to manually reset this indicator and you do that by holding the filter reset or the ice off button for three seconds um, if you do want to turn the ice off for whatever reason you just press ice off and the ice um, it stops making ice you wouldn't need to do that I, we've never had to do that because the actual ice maker has a sensor which means uh, it doesn't fill up and, and get clogged up um, you might do it if you're going away if you're going away on holiday for a, uh, for a while and you want to empty this out uh, so it doesn't all start sticking together you might turn the ice off so it doesn't generate ice while you're off but it will stop generating ice once it gets to a certain level uh, if you're using it regularly um, you don't need to use the ice off functionality now I want to show you behind the fridge this is the back side of the fridge at the bottom it has this panel attached to the bottom of the fridge I've taken it off I'll put it inside there because I want to show you the inside now the most important part of the fridge is the compressor which is this black thing here and that is what generates the cold air uh, to cool the fridge that is but by doing that it gets really hot to keep it cool there's a fan a white fan here um, which is trying to keep it cool now what happens is if you live in an area like us this whole thing gets full of dust so you've got to hoover it every six months I'd say now because it gets full of dust it clogs up the fan the fan clogs up stops stops cooling the compressor the compressor overheats and the fridge shuts off what will happen if, if the, once the fridge shuts off obviously temperature of the food starts going up the, it will stop making ice so you'll notice that you stop making ice um, or you might notice that the, the food is warmer I would keep a thermostat in there and just keep an eye on the thermostat as well uh, the thermometer as well um, but if that happens to you there's two things you need to remember to do firstly hoover the whole thing to so turn the fridge off um, from the from the mains pull out the plug and hoover the whole thing using a plastic accessory on your hoover so you don't want to be sticking lots of metal hoover bits in there use a plastic accessory clean it all out don't I wouldn't use a cloth I would just use the hoover to pull out 
uh, as much dust as you can. And, um, and then when you, when you see that the fan is clear, then plug the fridge back in and wait and the, the fan should start on its own. The other thing that if it doesn't start, you need to carry on cleaning it and cleaning it and maybe give it a little nudge and it will start. The other thing that I do when it gets really hot is I actually use a desk fan and I put it alongside, I put it on the back here and I blow the air onto the compressor to cool it down even more. And we've had to do that this summer because it got so hot. And um, if you give it a couple of minutes, it, the fridge will, um, the, the compressor will come back on because it'll, it'll lower the temperature of the compressor and the fridge will come back on. You may need to just keep stopping and starting your fridge, so turning it off and turning it on again a couple of times for the fan to kick in, but it's worth giving it uh, a chance, worth giving the fan a chance to kick in on its own. And if it's really hot, then um, and especially you know if you have your fridge against a wall or next to a radiator, um, yeah, actually the radiator would be off in the summer, so that doesn't make sense. If it's against a wall where there's not a lot of airflow, it, um, it's worth uh, using the fan trick as well. So have a have a powerful desk fan and have that going against the compressor as well, and that should sort you out. So there you go. That's the Samsung American uh, double fridge. Hope you enjoyed the review. Hope it was useful and helps you uh, with with your fridge and understand maybe understand your fridge a little bit better. We looked at how the panel works. We looked at how the how the fridge works. We also looked at you know, if uh, if uh, it overheats, what you need to do. So uh, I'm going to keep uh, throwing out these reviews of things. These are things that I've got in my house. If you uh, if you're enjoying it, uh, if you've not subscribed already, hit subscribe so you can see when I'm doing the, throwing out the reviews. Uh, or throw me a comment if I've not covered anything. I go back downstairs and, and cover any of the areas that you know maybe weren't clear. Happy to do that. Uh, so throw me a comment uh, down, down below. I've linked a couple of things in the description uh, where you can find this fridge. Um, I think I'll put the, therm uh, the thermometer in there as well and the filters. Um, and if you like the like the video, hit me a, hit me the like so uh, so other people can enjoy the content as well. See you next time.